welcome to Wild and Wonderful. My name is Sophia, and I'm a naturalist at the Forest Preserves of Cook County. Today we're going on an adventure at the Little Red Schoolhouse Nature Center. My naturalist friend Janice is going to teach us some really great stuff today. Hey everybody! Welcome to the Little Red Schoolhouse. It is such a beautiful day to be out here. So what are we going to do today? Well, Sophia, since fishing is such a great summer activity, I thought we could talk about fish. What makes a fish? So what makes a fish? Scales, fins, and gills. Scales act like armor that protect a fish. Scales do the same thing for fish that fur does for coyotes, feathers do for birds, and skin does for people. Our skin protects us, but it's a lot softer than fish scales. Our skin, yes, but not our fingernails. The material that makes up our fingernails is made of the same material that makes up fish scales. It's called keratin. Wow, we have something in common with fish. So if you think of scales like skin, you can think of fins like arms and legs. Fins help a fish move up and down and side to side in the water. And gills help fish breathe in the water, just like how our lungs help us breathe on land. That's right. Fish are aquatic animals, which means they live in the water. They actually soak up the oxygen from the water into their gills. And that's why it's important that fish have clean water. And those are all the parts that make a fish a fish, and they help them survive underwater. Why don't we take a look inside the Nature Center at some of the fish that live right here in Cook County? Let's go. Nature Center and behind us are some aquariums which house some of our native fish species that live right here in Cook County. Janice, what makes them so special? Why don't we take a look? Look at how fast they're moving. Wow, that one's really fast. Yeah. Those up there are completely camouflaged against the glass. Yeah, those are great ways that they actually survive from predators such as larger fish or birds. But, you know, not all fish actually have to move as fast. If you notice, our spotted gar here is sort of lumbering through the water. Look at his long snout. Yeah, so his snout is super long and just a very powerful jaw to help him eat crayfish. About half their diet is crayfish. But of course, they also eat other fish that are smaller than they are. And also, if you look along the side of his body, He's got a bit of a line, and those are called lateral lines. They have like little holes on the side of their bodies, which have receptors that detect movement in the water. That's another reason they can survive. And gar are really recognizable with their really long pointy snout and their cylindrical long bodies. And see how slowly he's sort of lumbering through the water? They're actually sometimes mistaken for logs hanging out in the water because they can get up to three feet in length and oftentimes they'll hang out during the warm days, just sort of close to the surface of the water. And look at his coloring. Do you notice all the spots on his body? They look like polka dots. Yeah, it helps him camouflage during the day. He's so cool. So the shape and size of a fish as well as color and movement, can all help a fish survive in its environment. Big smile! 
perfect. You can really see that mouth. It's so crazy. They have such powerful jaws. How to help a fish! So there are some ways that we can help fish survive and thrive in the wild. Number one, always put trash in its place. Number two, make sure to clean up all chemicals and make sure they don't enter our waterway. And number three, never feed wildlife. And that includes fish. So here we are in the wild along the edge of Long John Slough. A slough, like the one right behind me, is a type of wetland. It's as big as a lake, but only as deep as a pond. And it's filled with all types of aquatic life. So we're here to check some live traps that we've set out in the slough in the water to check and see what sort of animals live in our ponds. And then later we'll be using them for a pond life program we have here at the Nature Center. What do you think we'll find, Janice? I don't know, I'm hoping for some good stuff. So let's go check for some fish. Crayfish. the animals that we found in our traps in this tank so we could take a closer look. We have a few fish, but they're all different sizes. We set our live traps along the shoreline of Long John Slough, so that's one of the reasons we caught some smaller fish. We caught some crayfish, and we caught some snails. And ooh, look at that, Sophia. A dragonfly larva. Cool. Very cool. What's that guy? He's a water scorpion. Look at him moving around. Living like a fish. Did you know fish also play an important role as a food source? Yeah, so fish eat other fish. They're carnivorous. Bigger fish eat smaller fish. Looks like what we caught are some young sunfish. As they get older, they'll develop more color. So do you see how they're darker on the top and lighter on the bottom? Yeah. So that's countershading. That's sort of a form of camouflage, and that actually helps them survive. So when an animal is trying to hunt for fish from above, they're unable to see them because of the dark scales, and then from the bottom, they're actually also protected because their bottom is lighter, similar to the color of the sky. Is that how they survive in the wild? It's one of the many ways they survive in the wild. Look at how fast they're moving. <laughs> joining us today. We hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about fish and seeing our beautiful slough. One of the many ways to recreate in the forest preserves is by fishing. We have over 40 fishing lakes for you to enjoy. Visit us on our website to find out more. See you next time on Wild, Wild and Wonderful! Wonderful.